Welcome back YouTube. Mopar Madman here with a 6.5mm bullet selection video. Um, this ties into my Ruger Precision Rifle series. Um, thought I'd go over a couple things so maybe some more of the videos that I come up with will make a little bit more sense. And I thought I would highlight some of the uh, projectiles that I plan to use, maybe why I selected them a little bit, and go over a little bit of criteria that I use for selecting the projectiles that I used for my ammunition testing in my Ruger Precision Rifle. Um, this may come into play for more than the Ruger Precision Rifle, however, for my application, this is uh, what I'm doing. Obviously, there's going to be several criteria. Um, number one, of course, is cost. Is cost a factor of what you're shooting? If you're trying to shoot the most amount of projectiles for the least amount of money, then you're going to sacrifice certain performance things based on, you know, economy. Um, so that might be one of your criteria. Um, the other thing when we go over some of these projectiles, I'm going to put up a spreadsheet up on the screen that you guys can look at and give you guys an idea of uh, some of the things that are available and maybe why or why you might not actually select some of the projectiles. Um, obviously, uh, in this particular caliber, the lighter the bullet, the faster it goes. Um, and so some of the data that it, that's out there um, can go as high as 3200 feet per second. Um, but one of the reasons why, especially if you're going to use this in a match, is if you know if there's a speed limit, sometimes people set speed limits so you don't wreck the steel that you're shooting. So 3200 feet per second might not be a realistic um, uh, velocity that you're allowed to shoot during your match. So that might knock out some of your projectiles that you're selecting. Um, some might have as good a ballistic coefficient, some might have the same uh, cost for a better ballistic coefficient. Um, some are going to have different applications. So, are, you know, are you just shooting targets? Are you using these for hunting? You know, all those things are coming to factor. And so, as we go down the list a little bit of, you know, why I selected kind of what I selected. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you what is the best or what isn't the best hunting bullet to use. I'm going to let you guys decide for yourself. This is just kind of the guidelines of where I went, where I went why I did what I did. Um, number one, I was trying to get a wide selection. Obviously I've got a lot of Hornaday data and that's why there's a lot of Hornaday bullets on the bench right here. Um, one of the other things uh, might be availability. Maybe you have the best bullet on the face of the earth for your gun, but you can't find it, you can't get it, you know, you just need to come up with another solution. Maybe you can't find Maybe you're a diehard Sierra guy and you can't find the 142 grain hollow point bow tails. You need to find another solution. Maybe you want to try the 140 grain match. You want to go to the 139 grain Lapuas and see what else will shoot. Maybe you want to go, uh, one of the other options in this thing is a 140 grain burger. That's a real popular round for this caliber. Um, so, go through a little bit of what I selected, why I selected it. Um, the first selection on the table is Hornady's. Uh, 26172s. Um, honestly, I got them for a good price, and they've got a reasonable ballistic coefficient of 0.465. It's not great. I've got low data on those to so 3,000 feet per second. Um, factory ammo is 2910, so I'm kind of mimicking factory load with that. Um, you know, uh, you're going to see on the screen during the thing. I'm going to put on the, my Excel spreadsheet, give you a little bit of comparison. So if you want to look at that, you can pause your video and. Stare at that to your heart's content. Um, I'll have it on here for a couple ones. Uh, so that's just one of the ones I selected. I bought 100 of them because they were cheap and I wanted to have some to shoot. Um, then you've got the 123 grains. There's two actual different ones. They're very similar, the 26171 and 26173. Uh, these two projectiles, slightly different in cost, 26171. Um, my regular price off, you know, basically these are all midway prices of when I made the video and looked them up. Regular price, these aren't sale or anything else. Obviously, this will change a little bit if you find a yeah, sale. Um, both of those are 123 grain projectiles. Both of them actually have the same ballistic coefficient. Both of them have load data to 3,000 feet per second. Um, really, no particular difference in those except the 26171 regular price seems to be two cents cheaper. Um, Obviously, the SST, um, it's got the ring, so if you want a crimp ring on there or you don't want a crimp ring or however you feel about that. When I looked in a little bit, I think the 26173 was actually 
design for the 6.5 Grendel more specifically. However, I'm really not sure that there's a gigantic difference between those two projectiles. Um, so just 123 game bullet to try. Um, next selection down the road is the 26 331. The 26 331 uh, 140 grain projectile. Great ballistic coefficient of 0.610. Um, the assumed mass velocity of the load data I have is 2725. Um, that does come in a factory loading of 2710 uh, feet per second. Um, again, I'm, you'll show you the chart that has the uh, comparison for uh, all the projectiles on that so you can kind of get an idea. Um, you know, when you look at those, you know, 5 mile an hour wind numbers and then the drop at 500, the wind is probably more important than the drop if you're unfamiliar with this. Um, you know, drop you can dial in. Uh, the wind is hard to dial in or since it's changing. So obviously you're wishing, you, the more high ballistic coefficient, the least wind effect you're going to have. And so I kind of have all of the uh, data on those. Um, so uh, next down the list, for I threw that in there for all you Sierra guys, I mostly shoot Hornet Day, but I did order 100 of those in just to uh, use for this video, or video series, I guess I should say. Um, so that's a... Uh, it's a 42 cent uh, per projectile, so it's not the cheapest. I did find that pack on sale. Ballistic coefficient's good, but not better than Hornaday, if everything's to be believed. And keep in mind, all these are theoreticals. There's a lot of arguing online whether or not these ballistic coefficients are reality. Um, so I've got low data on those to 2750 from Hodgkin. Um, and you'll see in the chart again the, uh, the drops and the wind effect. Um, and then the Lapua seemed to be another popular one that people like to shoot. So that's the 139 grain. Um, you'll see the you know the BC on that is only 0.578, um, and I'm only assuming low data 2700. I wasn't having a lot of luck finding Lapua low data. Most of that's form stuff, so I'll have to creep that up a little bit more safely on my own and look for pressure signs. To, but I don't really, I can't count on that going a whole lot faster than 2700 feet per second. So. You know, I, I base my velocities on my chart based on that. Two wild cards that are not on the table right now, but are on the list, because um, I thought they were worth mentioning. Number one is the burger, um, which is all the way at the end on the chart. Um, I don't really plan on getting any of these at the moment. Maybe I'll just change my mind and try them out later. But right now, um, the burger is a little bit expensive. Um, there's no numbers on there that justify... Uh, you know, I guess there's no numbers on there that justify for me spending that extra money on it. There's no insanely high ballistic coefficient, but better than everybody else. Um, there's no low data out to, you know, 300 feet per second faster than everybody else. So um, right now I'm going to skip the burgers, and uh, if I can find another load from a cheaper projectile, I'm going to do it. Um, I can't believe that I skipped right over the 6.5 143 grain LDX. So, of all the bullet or projectiles on the table, um, this has the best ballistic coefficient on the table. 0. 0.625 is what this thing claims. Obviously, G1 ballistic coefficient. Um, there are some people out there reporting great, uh, great response in the Ruger Precision Rifle from this projectile. I'm super excited to try it out. It, there is an available factory loading with that. Um, that's the uh, that I actually have right behind here, the Precision Hunter, um, the Precision Hunter, uh, 143 grain LDX, the factory load advertised at 2,700 feet per second. Um, the uh, Hornady number on that, if you can't read the screen, is 81499. Um, so next thing I wanted to mention, Nosler, actually king of the day, at least for one of the research that I've done, at least as the making of this video, has the highest ballistic coefficient advertised that I could find. Nosler has a projectile part number 58922, about a 50 cent per projectile, 142 grain, advertised ballistic coefficient of 0.719. On the chart, the best data out of everyone. Velocity a thousand yards. This thing is still supposedly cooking at 1608 feet per second. There are a lot of comments online, at least on Midway's website, that this projectile does not perform as advertised. However, I couldn't find them in store. 
I have them on back order. So before my series is over, I hope to at least put a few of those down the pipe, uh, get a load set up for those, and maybe if I can get out to a thousand, I'll have some of those to uh, to try out and see for myself, and I'll put out my findings. Maybe keep in mind with all this, your findings may be wildly different than mine. Maybe your gun will shoot completely different than mine. Maybe every single projectile that my gun likes, yours won't, and vice versa. But I thought I'd lay it out. These are all the projectiles. These are what they look like. Um, you know, the LDX is expanding uh, specific hunting round. Um, you've got the, the match ammo that's, that's tipped. Um, you guys do the research for yourself. If you guys want to use this for hunting, mostly I'm really honestly using this for banging plates right now. At least that's my, uh, my anticipated uh, use. And so I'm just trying to develop a projectile that will shoot accurately at distance. And so these are what I've got. Uh, if you guys have another projectile that I've missed, by all means, leave in the comments. I'm willing to uh, go pick up something else, try a different loadout. I'm looking for a load that shoots in this lights out. Um, if you guys are just trying to develop a load that is going to work for a very you know short distance, you know, 100 or 200 yards, then all that wind might not be a big deal to you guys. Um, so. You know, use it for what it's worth. I just thought I'd throw the numbers up there. Those are the numbers I use when I select my projectiles. Um, I think I put a couple more on there, but a couple I skipped over. They just didn't. I just didn't see a need to get those. But hey, if I can't find a load somewhere on this page, I'm I might go there. So you know, I skipped over the 26, 332 Hornet days because there's the same weight and higher ballistic coefficient is 26 331s and so that's why I went there I'm going for ballistic coefficient I'm trying to get the best wind cheater that I can possibly get um, that's as economical as I can get so this is where we're going to start out I'm not saying that's where we're going to end up but these are what we're going to try these are what we're going to test and this is what I'm going to give you guys some data on and um, I'm not going to use every single power with every single combination that's probably out there um, I'm probably going to cheat, start off with some H4350, start running some loads, and see what I get. If I don't like my H4350 results, I'll switch to something else and see where I get. But uh, I know most of the early stuff that Horner Day um, was advertising, given loaded data for, was H4350. So probably where I'm going to start because I don't need to reinvent the wheel. But if I don't find my gun likes it, I'll switch to something else. Um, the next video coming down the pike, um, I should be comparing some of the 143 game factory ammo. Um, I'm going to work up some hand loads with 143 game ELDX and, uh, and I think some of also the 140 grain ELD match loads and and give you guys the uh, velocity data, the load workup and show you some of the groups. So that's coming down the pike. Stay tuned, like, subscribe, comment down on the bottom if you guys want to see something else. If there's a projectile that I've missed it's not the burger. I'm fully aware, guys, if you're watching this, that I have skipped the burger for right now, and maybe that's a gigantic mistake, and I'll get back to that. But uh, right now, I've got a lot to choose from. I said my local range only can get to 150 yards, and so I think any one of these projectiles is going to reasonably reach to where I need, where I'm, I can at my local range, and it's going to be out of distance where this matters more. Um, so anyway, have a great day, YouTube. Hope you like the video. Again, like, subscribe, comment below. Tell me if there's something else you guys need to see, want to see, and I will see what I can do if it's reasonable. Hope you guys have a great day.